Hello, let's learn about perfect competition model. So this is one of my uh, my favorite things here. Let's get the music out of here uh, in economics. And so uh, it's one of the models, right? So back to the beginning of the course, Rodney Dangerfield kind of objected. He said nothing in the real world perfectly fits this, and he's probably right. So this is a way of thinking about competitive markets, right? So the lemonade stand is very competitive. Um, it's very competitive because there's uh, no way to stop the competition. If you're making a bunch of money, competitors going to show up real quick. Uh, that first formula there, we'll learn about that um, in, an, in a later uh, clip here. So this is the perfect competition model. So what are we up to? Okay, so all of this has to do with pricing power. So some firms like Nike, Under Armour, and Adidas, they have what's called pricing power. They can raise their price higher than their competitor and they'll still sell the product, right? Some people think that uh, these products will make them, you know, wick sweat away less on their shirts or jump higher, run faster, look more attractive to everybody, whatever, um, be like Mike and all that stuff. So um, some firms get to choose their own price, and this is uh, some firms have pricing power, right? You can see it, uh, you know, in your communities. Uh, well, what's up with that? Um, and they're called price makers. Now, the, the Haynes Company, uh, doesn't doesn't have as much pricing power because they sell primarily sell undershirts and underwear. People don't see them, right? And uh, I guess not as often. Ha ha ha. Uh, but um, anyway, so they, they have some price make, making ability, but not not as much as Nike, Under Armour, Adidas, you know, any name brand that people tend to value. Right? And they may not value it forever, but they value it right now. Some firms must take the prices that ever that the market gives them. And these firms are known as price takers. Economists were very uh, tricky when uh, when naming these things. So they just take whatever the market price is. It's going to be the equilibrium price. Right? So give you a second to think about that. Who has to uh, take whatever the price is of their competitor? They can't go any higher. They'll go out of business. Example would be apples, right? So up in Washington, there's you know hundreds of uh, firms that grow uh, trees that, that grow apples, and then they uh, harvest the apples and the whenever the harvesting time is I would assume that's the fall I don't know that much about the apple growing season but anyhow uh, when they grow those apples they sell them they sell them all at the same price often there's a futures market that even tells them what the price is going to be in the future uh, before they they sell the apples um, you could have an apple tree in your backyard and start selling the apples you could sell them at the same price uh, and all the apples are pretty much exactly the same Paperclip's another example, right? Paperclip firm just going to take whatever the price, uh, the equilibrium price of the other firms in the market. It doesn't do them too much good to pick a lower price because that's just going to cut their profit and all the other firms are going to lower the price too. So uh, not good. Okay, so here's a question. If I'm going to the store to buy paperclips. What do I care about most as a consumer? Similarly, if I go to the store to buy a smartphone, what am I going to care most about as a consumer? So hopefully you think that uh, the paperclip is going to be the cost and cost alone, right? Because paperclips are the same. Uh, nobody in the history of paperclip purchasing has ever looked at where the paperclips came from. Uh, you tend not to care. We just care about getting the most bang for our buck. And if you think back to um, our previous lessons there, it's the average total cost. We want that to be minimized, right? Because we don't care about the quality and paper clips. Uh, now the paper clip company knows this so sometimes they put like you know Hello Kitties on there, or they'll paint them yellow or green or something like that. Uh, come up with a new type of paper clip and it's still going to be really competitive. Uh, now on the cell phone on the other hand there's lots of things we look at right where there's people that are brand loyal, the Apple people, Samsung people, all those people they care about the, the memory that it has, the camera, uh, what network can it connect to, the speed of the processor, the screen size, uh, if you drop it on the ground, if you drop it in the toilet, what's going to happen? Um, so we care about all those things. We, we definitely care about quality. We're willing to pay a little bit more uh, to get a different brand or, or a different quality level that we, we didn't think we had before. Okay, So two different kinds of markets. So there's different models of economic competition. Okay, And uh, the five basic ones that we'll learn in this class uh, the first one we're going to learn is perfect competition. That's in this one. Uh, later on, we'll learn about monopoly and monopsony. And then we'll learn about monopolistic competition and oligopoly. That's right? so pretty fun. What we're really measuring is how much price or non-price competition is there uh, and how much product differentiation there is. Right, And then it's also on the cost side comes into it. Uh, pretty well. So some guiding questions as we go through all this, and, and this you should definitely put in your paper, 
um, think think through these things, think through your future career. And uh, guys, it's it's perfectly okay if you write this paper and then decide, well, maybe that career isn't isn't going the direction I I thought it was going. Right? I've had several students who. Uh, you know, they wanted to do some career that they wanted to do. They they analyzed it and thought, oh, maybe it's time to think about something else. This doesn't look uh, positive for the future. Anyhow, is the product, is the good or service uh, cheap or expensive? Is there a lot of variety uh, if you go to the store in this product, right? In the case of paper clips, no. Is this product easy to buy? Paper clips, yes. Um, you know, there are some products that are relatively hard to buy. There's just not many stores selling them. Uh, the internet's knocked down a lot of that problem, but you know, some products you, you really have to uh, put in some effort to purchase this thing. Uh, does the product become cheaper if I buy more quantity? In terms of paper clips, that's true. Uh, is the product easy for a firm to make, right? How hard is it for the firm to make? That's a cost side question. And would this product be easy for the firm to leave a market? So all of those are important to think about. Okay, so this is the definition of uh, perfectly competitive markets. Okay, so make sure you write this down, think about it, think about what it means. And, and this one for firms tends to be bad, right? Firms don't want to be here. So they'll do some things to, to get out of this. So first, there's got to be a lot of firms, right? And competition means there's got to be lots of lots of firms running around uh, competing. And they've got to be selling nearly an identical product. This is really one of the most important parts of this. So in the case of apples, I mean, they dump all of the apples from all the different firms into, uh, into one basket and then... Um, and then they sell them all together at Fry's, right? So, or one truck, right? So you can't tell the difference, right? Avocados, you can't tell which farm it came from, which avocado tree, you don't know, you don't really care either. They just dump them all together because they're nearly identical, right? Paper clips, same thing. Um, firm, because all of the products are identical, the firms have no pricing power. So everybody is essentially selling the same thing at the same price, so you can't raise your price. It doesn't work. Everybody is price taking. So this is a, a phrase economists often use. And say we're price taking uh, firms in a perfectly competitive market. It's got to be low barriers to entry. Okay. In other words, um, it's easy to enter this market. So in the case of you know paper paper clips, it would be easy to enter the paper clip market. In terms in terms of place of uh, apples, avocados. As long as the climate was right, you could you could put a tree in your backyard. There's plenty of people doing the uh, the new movement of the, the front yard guard or uh, farming, right? So, so suburban farming or something like that. Term here is barriers to entry, so low barriers to entry. And it's got to be easy to close down the firm. So it's got to be low barriers to exit. Right? It's got to be easy to get in and get out. Um, there are types of firms, you know, like car companies or banks. It's not easy to close down the firm. You're going to have to sell it to somebody else. The government might get involved. But they are going to let Apple growers or paperclip companies, orange growers, they're going to let all of them go out of business. Okay. Uh, the next one, uh, make sure you write down what this means. The consumers have perfect information. And what it means is that the pur pur purchasers know what the price of the product is going to be. Okay. So they know that across town it's a certain price and, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, when I was learning uh, economics, in the late 90s, I mean, you kind of always know it, but I mean, formal, formally, uh, the professor kind of laughed and said, uh, you know, this, there's no way that, uh, I say the early 90s, late 90s, whatever. Um, he said that, you know, this one's kind of unrealistic, but it's an assumption that we make. Nobody's going to ever know what price everything is all around the world. Well, this was, this was right before the internet uh, took over, and now you can walk through the store, zap something with your phone, you know exactly what the price is, right? So we've, we've come pretty close to perfect information, and in reality, it's been quite disruptive, especially in the retail industry. So for firms, if you were in this situation, you really, really need to cut costs. So this is why you'll see farmers try to use the you know, cheapest labor that they can. It's not because they're greedy or mean. It's just because they're trying to knock down the cost because they can't raise the price. So an example of this would be salt. And so what you want to do is you want to run it through here. Um, is this true? So many firms, yes. Uh, this is a well-known one, but there's lots of them. Identical product, yep, it's salt. No pricing power, nope, you gotta sell it, it's pretty much the same price within you know a percentage or two. Uh, easy to start, you could start your own salt company. I don't know why you would, because of the implicit cost there, uh, but you could if you wanted to, you could get a salt mine or you can go out to the ocean and harvest it, it's a new thing, sea salt and whatever. Uh, could this company close down? Sure, no, no big deal. 
Uh, does the consumer know? And you may not know exactly what the price of salt is right now. You could look it up. But you also know that $5 a bag is too much. Salt is, is pretty cheap. So you have an idea in your head if you've purchased it. Let's think of some other examples. Paper clips. Let's see if it works. Many firms, identical product. Everybody's selling the same price. You know, take a look at the store next time. Uh, easy to start a new firm. Sure, you wouldn't want to, but you could. Uh, easy to close down. Consumer knows what the price is. Gasoline is an interesting one, right? So are there many firms? Well, maybe. You know, in Arizona, there's maybe five or so uh, companies selling refined gasoline. Are they selling nearly identical products? Pretty much, right? doesn't matter where you get your gas from. There's different octanes, but, you know, everybody at the 87 octane is selling pretty much the same thing. They do not have pricing power, uh, and they do have perfect information. This is kind of neat. We have perfect information in the gasoline market because we can see the price on the street, right? Here's where it gets a little tough, right? Is it easy to start a new firm? Well, not really. There's no refineries in the state of Arizona. Closest ones are in Texas. Um, so there's this pipeline, right? So the, this one isn't doesn't completely fit the definition. It's close. Uh, it's it's really it's in between this one and another one that we'll learn about later. So nothing's going to hit this perfectly in the real world. So just understand that. Okay. So there you go. Now you understand this meme. Okay. So I'll give you a couple of uh, quiz questions to do this here. It's a lot like your homework. Perfect competition. All the following situations arise except. So this is really a true or false question. Do firms produce an identical product, good or service? Yes, they do. Each firm chooses the price at which to sell the product. No, they don't, but I'm going to keep reading it and see the rest of what's going on. They can sell any quantity they choose. Okay, that's true. Buyers know the seller's price. Yes, that's perfect information. And firms can sell the goods below the equal below the equilibrium price, but will choose against it. That's true. So the right answer there is B. Oh, look at that. Okay. Which of the following markets is closest to perfect competition? I recommend you pause the video before I hit the answer. Okay, so flash memory is pretty much identical. It might put a superhero on the outside, but essentially what's inside is identical. So automobiles violated by not that many companies, expensive to start. Sandwiches, they're selling a differentiated product. Not all the sandwiches are the same, there's different prices. Bread, not all the bread's the same, different prices, haircuts, different quality. Uh, you know, some of them give you a head massage or shampoo or whatever, uh, different prices. Flash drive, flash memory is pretty much the same price. Uh, they might put some kind of thing on the outside, but it's closest to the perfect competition model. And then finally, firm finds firm finds itself in a perfectly competitive market. What's the best strategy? Raises price, no. Uh, advertise. So this one, it, it, it depends on um, how we're saying the advertisement. So you will see commercials there. I put one in the um, uh, in the clips there. Uh, you'll see them, though, from the industry, not from the individual firm. So firms won't. So less products, no. Cut cost of production, that one sounds pretty good. Shut down and go to work for Walmart, that's just a silly answer. So I think the answer is D, and it is D. Okay, so this is the perfect competition model uh, in economics. We'll graph it next.